All right, let's do it. Let's talk about Elon Musk buying Twitter. It's a topic we've been largely avoiding as a tech-focused channel, but now that this has officially made the leap from speculation to confirmed Twitter purchase, we probably need to examine what this means for Elon and his portfolio of business ventures, because this will undoubtedly have a wider-ranging effect. Ostensibly, Elon says that he is buying Twitter because he wants to protect free speech and democracy. In a series of text slides posted to his Twitter feed, Elon wrote, It is important to the future of civilization to have a common digital town square where a wide range of beliefs can be debated in a healthy manner without resorting to violence. Which I think is something that most people could easily agree is a great idea. But we seem to be having a much more difficult time agreeing on how that architecture should be built and who should manage it. Elon Musk probably isn't the best candidate for the job, but he's not the worst either. And one thing that we can safely say for sure is that Elon did not buy Twitter to make money. I don't think you'll find one person who would claim he got a great deal purchasing a social media company for $44 billion in this economy, particularly as we watch the old guard at Facebook slowly crash and burn. So what's Elon up to with this whole Twitter situation? Why is he doing it? Let's try and work that out. Let's try and remember how we got here in the first place, because it's been a while. This all started back in March, when Elon started musing that he's given serious thought to building an alternative to Twitter. Little did we know that Elon had already started buying up massive amounts of Twitter stock and had approached the board and CEO of the company to talk about the potential of taking his own seat on the board. Then in April, public regulatory filings reveal that Elon has actually gathered up a 9% stake in Twitter shares worth about $3 billion. The following day, Elon is offered a seat on the company's board of directors on the condition that he stop buying more of the company. CEO Parag Agrawal tweets, It became clear to us that he would bring great value to our board. Less than five days later, Elon reportedly messaged Twitter's board chairman, Brett Taylor, and said, Fixing Twitter by chatting with Parag won't work. Drastic action is needed. Elon declines his seat on the board. A few days later, on April 14th, a securities filing shows that Elon has made an offer to buy the company outright for $44 billion. Then, there was the months-long back and forth where Twitter said they didn't want to be purchased and tried to thwart what they called a hostile takeover. Then they changed their mind and accepted Elon's offer. Then, Elon started saying that maybe he didn't want Twitter because they couldn't properly account for the spam bots and fake accounts. And by July, he had decided he wasn't actually going to do the deal at all. But Twitter had seemingly warmed up to the idea of the whole hostile takeover thing, and they sued Elon to force him to buy them. Elon countersued. And then the whole situation kind of went on the back burner while the lawyers set about their work. That brings us to October, where things get interesting again. Elon tweeted on the 4th, Buying Twitter is an accelerant to creating X, the everything app. And followed that up by writing, Twitter probably accelerates X by 3 to 5 years, but I could be wrong. So that was our first real signal that Elon had bigger plans for Twitter than just dialing back censorship and making the platform more open. He wants to leverage the Twitter platform to finally create X.com, whatever that is. Apparently, it will be everything, which tells us basically nothing. What we do know is that Elon made his decision to yield his court battle just days before he was scheduled to take the stand for his deposition by Twitter lawyers. It's almost certain that this would have been a hostile, grueling, and likely revealing cross-examination that may have played a part in his choice. Elon was given until October 28th to come up with the 44 billies which he collected from a variety of partners and investors that range from personal friends to Silicon Valley tech titans to even a highly controversial contribution from the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. And finally, on October 26th, Elon walks through the front door of Twitter's San Francisco headquarters carrying a kitchen sink, announcing, let that sink in. 
The next day, Elon fires CEO Parag Agrawal, along with the majority of Twitter's top executives. They're escorted out of the building by security. Elon installs himself as the sole director of Twitter.com. Elon did clarify that his time as chief twit will only be temporary, but for now at least, he's flying solo. And for sure, we could get into all of the hot takes flying around from unnamed sources familiar with the matter, who say that Elon is going to lay off three quarters of the staff, start charging 20 bucks a month to have a blue check mark, and bring back Donald Trump. But none of that really matters in the context of this channel, and we know that the story is going to change by the time this video comes out, so let's move on entirely. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. Okay, hear me out on this one. There seems to be a lot of similar intentions between Elon's goals with Twitter and his mission to colonize the planet Mars. It's not something that will benefit him financially, and it will undoubtedly make his life preposterously more difficult, but he wants to do these things because he genuinely believes that it will greatly benefit, or even outright, save humanity. This is where it becomes very easy to accuse Elon of being egotistical, or having delusions of grandeur. And that could well be the case. Here is more of what Elon wrote in his message to Twitter's advertising clients. There is currently great danger that social media will splinter into far right-wing and far left-wing echo chambers that generate more hate and divide our society. And he definitely is correct in that prediction. It's already begun with those associated with the far right. They've migrated off Twitter and onto other platforms like Donald Trump's Truth Social. Outline spaces that are catered to only ever show them content that they agree with and that supports their worldview. I don't know if there's anything similar for people on the far left. They seem to just spend their time using Twitter to write about how much they hate Elon Musk and how they're going to leave Twitter, but I don't think they actually have anywhere to go, but I guess we'll find out. Let me know in the comments below if you know of another platform. But that's kind of the point. Clearly, Twitter has not been working as a communal forum for the citizens of the internet, so something does need to change. And Elon, at least, knows that just opening the floodgates and making Twitter a reincarnation of old-school 4chan is not going to work either. Elon wrote, quote, Twitter obviously cannot become a free-for-all hellscape where anything can be said with no consequences. In addition to adhering to the laws of the land, our platform must be warm and welcoming to all, where you can choose your desired experience according to your preferences, just as you can choose, for example, to see movies or play video games ranging from all ages to mature. This is an idea that he's mulled over in a few different forms lately, that you can choose what level of free speech you want to see on Twitter, just like you can choose a movie based on its content rating. This is likely much more difficult to implement than it sounds. And then there's X, the everything app. Maybe that's the real reason for all of this? So we know Elon likes the letter X. That's the name he calls his firstborn child with Grimes, who was born in 2020. X.com was Elon's original attempt at an online bank that he founded in 1999. After a merger with the software company Confinity, Peter Thiel took over X and turned it into PayPal. In 2017, Elon bought the domain x.com back from PayPal. If you go there today, it will probably be a blank page with a single lowercase x in the top corner. If Elon were to create some all-consuming everything app, then it would probably look a lot like the Chinese app WeChat. In China, WeChat is used by more than a billion people as an all-in-one social media, instant messaging, and mobile payment app. It's used to order food, hail cabs, and find news. It is sewn into the fabric of daily life. Elon talked about this on the All In podcast back in May of this year. He said, I think such an app would be really useful, and just the utility of sort of a spam-free thing where you could make comments, you could post videos. I think it's important for content creators to have a revenue share. During Tesla's annual shareholders meeting in August, Elon said that he had a pretty grand vision for X as something that would be very useful to the world. But Elon also said that he doesn't need Twitter to create X. It only accelerates the project 
by three to five years. So would that really be worth $44 billion? I don't know. That seems like a hard call. Though out of everything we've talked about today, this X app does sound like the way for Elon to actually make money and a lot of it. Maybe Elon thinks that he can make that money back in the three or five years of time that he saves in creating his all-consuming everything app. There's definitely the potential there to make a hell of a lot of money. If he can build one platform that does the same job as Twitter, WhatsApp, PayPal, Uber, and Google, think about it. So the question remains, can Elon Musk deliver? Can he save democracy and heal our divided society by simply reworking a social media app? Can he leverage that purchase to create one app that is all things to all people around the world? Is this just an impulse buy that got way out of hand? Now he's just trying to do the best with what he's got? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, as always, drop your theories on Elon and Twitter in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.